guys! Welcome to Historical Gossip. In this channel, we do what humans have done best since we've evolved to be a super aware being. Gossiping! Have you ever wondered what kind of punishments and torture methods women have faced throughout history? Well, today we delve deep into the dark shadows of history to uncover the shocking punishments endured by women from different corners of the world. Some of these dark torture methods are long forgotten, but unfortunately some still persist even in the modern era. Let's begin with the Middle Ages, where torture tool called the Skull's Bridle was inflicted as a form of punishment for gossiping and disputes. While initially intended for those guilty of slander, it was often applied to individuals who engaged in gossip or criticism. Women, particularly those who challenged their husband's authority or spoke ill of them, were frequently targeted. This punishment involved the use of a device known as the Scold's Bridle, which was essentially an iron muzzle placed around the head, complete with a plate pressing against the tongue. Its purpose was to silence the accused gossip monger, preventing them from speaking or eating. In some cases, the plate featured hooks or iron spikes that caused severe injuries with even the slightest tongue movement, resulting in the condemned person ingesting their own blood. Shockingly, some husbands even paraded their bridled wives through town, allowing the public to humiliate and, tragically, sometimes even fatally assault them. The concept of female submission was deeply entrenched in society by the 16th century, to the extent that girls were often named silence. The Skull's Bridal punishment had its roots in the ancient eye for an eye tooth for a tooth practice, and it involved inflicting direct pain on the tongue as a form of catharsis to purge sin. One of the earliest instances of this punishment involved Bestia Eifer, who in 1567 in Scotland had defamed a man named Billy Hunter by spreading gossip about his land measurement. The Scold's Bridal originated in 16th century Great Britain and later spread to Germany, where a bell was added to draw even more attention during humiliating public walks. Eventually, this torture method became prevalent across Europe. It was also used on marginalised women in society, accused of witchcraft or disruptive behaviour. In stark contrast, noble British women could gossip without the risk of being bridled. The Scold's Bridal even made its way to the New World through British colonies in North America, where it was used as a coercive measure against African slaves on plantation. During the 18th century, the Inquisition used the punishment not to extract confessions, but to facilitate peaceful conversations between inquisitors, avoiding the disturbances caused by prisoners' cries. It's worth noting that individuals sentenced to be burned at the stake were often gagged with the skull's bridle to prevent witches or heretics from disrupting the execution with their screams. According to contemporary accounts, even Giordano Bruno met his fate wearing one equipped with two long spikes, one piercing his tongue and the other splitting his palate. Women accused of witchcraft faced a variant with a bridle containing a strip of iron featuring four sharp points around the cheeks. This bridle had a hook suspending the witch from the ceiling while the spikes pierced her face, a horrifying ordeal that could last up to nine hours. Between the 16th and 18th centuries, various forms of infamy masks were devised, often with imaginative and artistic shapes that publicly ridiculed and humiliated their wearers. The majority of victims were women, and the underlying principle was always let the woman be silent in church. These masks were used to emphasise both secular and religious hierarchies, predominantly controlled by men. The victims, encased in these masks and displayed in public squares, were frequently subjected to physical abuse, beatings, defilement and injuries, particularly to their breasts and pubic region. For women accused of being quarrelsome, a punishment known as the shrew's fiddle or the neck violin was employed. This device required women to wear it individually and walk back and forth as a penalty. Alternatively, they could be bound together with the women they had conflicts with. 
the pillory was a wooden contraption specifically used on women to punish common offences such as disputes with neighbours, gossip or extramarital affairs. It immobilised their necks and exposed them to the cruelty of onlookers. Women perceived as domineering or despotic could face the walk of shame. They were compelled to walk barefoot through town while wearing only a shift, with the crowd gathering to witness and partake in their humiliation. Women accused of sexual misconduct were subjected to the cucking stool. While this punishment was used on both men and women, it was particularly directed at women accused of prostitution. They were made to sit on these stools and paraded through the town for ridicule. A variant of this punishment involved attaching the stool to long wooden beams and suspending it over a river or lake. The women would be immersed in water and then pulled out. In some documented cases, women were immersed so many times that it resulted in their death. This punishment was designed to extinguish their fiery spirit. Women accused of having multiple sexual partners could be made to wear the drunkard's cloak, also known as the barrel of shame. While this instrument was initially used to punish men for offences like theft, drunkenness and disorderly conduct, it was also applied to women who were paraded through the town for public humiliation. In cases of women engaging in sexual promiscuity and extramarital affairs, a punishment known as nose-cutting was inflicted, involving the mutilation or removal of the nose. This was done to disfigure the women and strip them of their beauty, whereas adulterous men were not subjected to similar penalties but were instead fine. Prostitutes or brothel owners were often branded with a hot iron. One notable case is Lady Lowe, who managed a brothel in Aberdeen and was branded on both cheeks with a hot iron, forced to wear a paper crown, and then expelled from the city with the warning that she would be denied if she returned. In the practice known as dunking, women accused of theft or witchcraft were drowned. The infamous dunking of the witch was a method by which hunters would determine if a woman was a witch based on whether she floated or not. If the woman floated, it was deemed she was in league with the devil rejecting the baptismal water. If she sank, she was cleared of being a witch, but she also died from being drowned. Women accused of betrayal, witchcraft or heresy were also burned at the stake. Those accused of communion with the devil were hanged and made to wear a tar-soaked dress before being set on fire. The Scarlet Letter is a classic American literary work written by Nathaniel Hawthorne in 1850, set in Puritan New England in the 17th century. The novel tells the story of Hester Prynne, who commits adultery and refuses to reveal the father of her child. As punishment, she faces a trial for adultery and is publicly humiliated on a scaffold, wearing a scarlet letter A on her chest, signifying adulterer initially. The most severe penalty for adultery was death, but it was later replaced with public corporal punishment. Eventually, the punishment evolved to require adulterous women to sew a red letter A on their chest to wear for life, a humiliating but less brutal penalty. The Inquisition pursued both men and women, but among the tools, one was used solely on women, the breast ripper a kind of spring-loaded device ending with four cold and hot fangs. It offered torment and butchered the breasts of women accused of heresy, adultery, lewd acts, white magic, eroticism, etc. Here are some punishments for adultery in other parts of the ancient world. In Thailand, the woman would be trapped in a cage. A large male elephant would then be brought into the cage and made to mate with her. The woman ended up dying due to the animal's abuse. In ancient Mongolia, if a man could prove his woman's infidelity, he had the right to cut her in two parts. In ancient Korea, they filled the body of the unfaithful woman with vinegar. When the body swelled, the betrayed man would punch her to death. In ancient Africa, both the unfaithful woman and her lover were thrown from a mountain. A betrayed man from an ancient tribe in Papua New Guinea had gruesome options for revenge. He was allowed to decapitate his wife's lover, but before he did that, he could first make the lover chop off his wife's fingers and then eat them. In the ancient Middle East, women suffered horrifying mutilation in sensitive areas like the abdomen, breasts and intimate regions. 
In ancient Turkey, the betrayed husband, along with any family members, had the authority to fatally stab the woman. In India, women who betrayed their partners faced collective abuse from around 20 village residents, despite it being contrary to Indian law. Regrettably, this custom still persists in some Islamic country. Stoning is still practiced in some Muslim states today. In this method, the condemned individual, whether male or female, is first wrapped in a white shroud and then buried in the ground, with the level of burial varying depending on gender, up to the waist for men and up to the chest for women. They are subsequently executed by being pelted with stones, often involving the participation of onlookers. The punishments endured by women in different parts of the world serve as powerful reminders of the resilience and strength that have always defined their spirit. I hope this video has shed light on the hidden chapters of women's history, prompting us all to be vigilant against the echoes of such injustices in our world today.